So yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, why I believe there's a need for a dark style preference um, and why specifically at the free desktop level. And first, I'm Cassidy with Elementary. And you might wonder, if you don't know what Elementary OS is, I think most of you probably do at this point, but uh, it's a Linux-based operating system. Um, but we're not actually using GNOME Shell and uh, most of the GNOME desktop, so why are we at a GNOME conference? It's because we basically use the GNOME desktop. Uh, we use effectively the same stack as GNOME, um, so while we might not be like a direct downstream of the entire GNOME experience, uh, there's so much overlapping tech that we're, we're very interested in working together on this and on um, making sure that the, this tooling is improved for everybody. Uh, we also strive to be intercompatible with uh, free desktop specifications. And if you don't know what that is, you should, because it's awesome. Um, go to freedesktop.org. This is like what controls or what uh, specs enable you to click on an uh, app launcher and it to open an app whether you're on KDE or GNOME or Elementary OS or XFCE or whatever, because uh, one day back in the day we all agreed that makes sense that it should be intercompatible. Um, and so this is a really great place to work on, on things that just make sense to be across any desktop environment and platform. So some background on dark styles, what you're here to hear about. Um, let's look at why uh, dark styles are a thing and kind of why, why this is being brought up now. So in the past year or so, uh, this weird thing happened across Mac OS, Windows, Android, and iOS, like basically all at the same time. Uh, they all announced and or released dark modes or dark styles. Um, and it's actually really interesting how they all implemented it because it's all kind of shockingly similar. And uh, We'll take a look at the specifics of those a little bit more, but it's interesting that it seems to be this thing that all these platforms are doing, and if we want free desktop to be competitive with these platforms, we should probably take a look at doing this as well. And at the same time, uh, browser vendors have been working with the W3C uh, standards body on the same exact thing, and it's now actually shipping in Safari, Chrome, and Firefox, uh, and the, the various rendering engines that those browsers use. So it's kind of this like, Everybody's doing it, but why? So why are dark styles a thing? What value is there in a dark style? So first we're going to look at the research. Um, a I did a little bit of research about this because I wanted to better understand why, not just like blindly follow the trend. Um, because even if these desktops are doing something and if we do some research, we might better understand the problem and actually do it better than other desktops and other operating systems. Uh, but I do also want to look at that prior art to, to understand what users and developers on those platforms are going to expect if they come to uh, our platforms. Uh, and then derived off of that, I want to look at basically what requirements of a free desktop spec for a dark style would be. So first, the research. Um, in my time contributing to elementary and GNOME, uh, I've become familiar with pleas from users to officially support or condone custom style sheets. Uh, dark modes, things like that, and there's whole lots of discussion about that happening. Um, but specifically, I've wanted to understand why people are requesting these things, um, and specifically about why they're requesting uh, dark styles. And so I've been talking with people on issue trackers, on GNOME projects, on Pop! OS issue tracker, on uh, the elementary issue tracker, and on social media and in person at Hackfest like this, and I also wanted to conduct a little bit more formal of a study um, to see if I could identify some patterns and just get some data to look at and kind of crunch. Um, so I surveyed uh, over 1,500 users of various OSs and environments um, just to kind of give me a snapshot into a look uh, of, of those users. Uh, and with that study, I tried to look at uh, custom styles, dark styles, and nightlight modes and how these may overlap and interact. Um, I'm going to focus mostly on the dark style now. There's a lot more information uh, on the elementary blog about the whole study and the, the results and the data from that if you want to take a look at that. It's, there's some pretty interesting things, and I think we could derive some more interesting stuff from that. But the biggest finding that I had was that 88% of those surveyed uh, use a dark style. Now, specifically, the question was worded, uh, do you sometimes... This is how many people chose sometimes or always when given the option 
of using a dark style across different platforms. So this might include things like a Twitter app on their phone or the Telegram app or whatever. Um, but 88% is still like really big. Like that's a lot. That's like a weirdly overwhelming majority. So I think it has a lot of value to look at like if everybody's using this, if so many people are interested in this feature, um, we should probably probably look at implementing it. Uh, and of that 88%, 81% of those users uh, said they were using it to address factors outside of their device. And this is specifically like um, if they're getting a headache, they might switch to a dark mode. Or uh, if their eyes feel a little extra strained at the end of the day, they might switch to a dark mode. Uh, or if they're just working in like a darker environment, like a dark office or a dark room, uh, they might switch to a dark mode. Um, and this could actually be seen as an accessibility feature. Uh, and that's kind of where we've seen similar efforts uh, labeled is under accessibility. And I have thoughts about that. Um, how many of you have seen or know what a curb cut is? Or are familiar with that term? Okay, so a curb cut is, is this. It's where like a sidewalk meets the street. Then it looks like the, cut, the curb is cut out. Um, this is an accessibility feature. This was designed um, for wheelchairs to be accessible, you know, so that wheelchairs can traverse crosswalks. Because if there's not a cut in the curb, you'd have to bounce down the, off the curb, and that's not very accessible. But this sort of idea of an accessibility feature is actually beneficial to a lot of people. Just because you're not in a wheelchair doesn't mean you don't benefit from a curb cut. Um, it's also useful for delivery people with like a two-wheel truck or a uh, people who have a little bit of trouble stepping up, like a toddler or uh, somebody with other slight mobility issues that might not consider themselves disabled or in need of accessibility features. But this actually is benef can be beneficial to so many people. And at elementary, at least, we feel this way about any accessibility feature on the desktop, that if it's an accessibility feature, it's just a feature because it can benefit so many people. Um, they shouldn't be pigeonholed away into their own place, and the desktop should just be accessible by default and offer up these sorts of features for everyone. Um, something we've heard a lot about accessibility features with elementary is that people don't realize they exist because they don't see themselves as needing that extra help. They don't see themselves as disabled, and they think that accessibility features are for people who are disabled. Um, but by exposing these features in the default desktop, it can benefit everybody. So back to dark styles. This means basically if you don't need a dark style all the time due to like severe vision issues, um, that one time you get a migraine, it might be nice to be able to just like toggle the lights out, you know? Um, or that one time you're using your laptop to take notes during a dark movie. Like, might not be a normal thing you do, but the one time you need it, it's really nice to have. So let's take a look at the prior art. What are other platforms doing? And specifically, I'm going to look at macOS, Windows, uh, Android, iOS, and the web, because um, it's been implemented across all these platforms. So on macOS, um, historically on macOS, you've been able to invert under accessibility settings, and that's kind of like a cheap dark mode. But it doesn't look so great. Um, all your colors are off, and, and it just like it, you have problems with depth because when something is drawn to look like it's uh, you know bubbled out, when you invert the colors, the shadow gets inverted, so it looks like it's like pressed in, and so that just throws off your whole UI. Um, so this was like an old style way of doing it, and it can work, uh, but it's just there's so many problems with it. Um, more recently in macOS Yosemite, they uh, added a system UI dark appearance preference. Um, and it just affects things like what we would consider the shell. So it just affects like the top panel, um, certain dialogues that are provided by the system that come up uh, in the dock at the bottom of the screen. But this wasn't actually accessible to different apps. Um, this, the reason they said they implemented this was for like users of pro apps, like video editors or, or photo editors when they're in that app that's already dark and they want to pull up a search, a system-wide search, it would be really jarring if that's bright white in their face. Uh, so they have a, an option for you to set it to a dark mode. Um, but this didn't really go the full way, but this was their first step in that direction. And then in macOS Mojave, they introduced a light dark appearance preference. And all the default apps on the platform follow this. So everything that comes out of the box on your Mac um, officially supports a dark and light pre appearance preference. Here you can see like the settings app uh, before they implemented it. And on the right side, there's that little toggle at the top where um, 
that you can adopt a dark style. And uh, third-party apps can also choose to support this. They Basically, they just build against the newest libraries of the operating system uh, and use native components that have default background and, and foreground colors included uh, and then test the crap out of it to make sure everything's still legible and if they have any custom styles. Um, but effectively, it's the important part here is that it's opt-in. So apps can choose to ignore this if they're just like, like a game. There's no like... It's a completely custom UI. It might not make sense to say, okay, I need to you know, make sure everything's drawn in the dark style because it's a game, it's an immersive experience. Um, or apps that just have already were in a dark style, they don't really need to change anything. So it's up to apps to opt into this preference. Um, and user pressure kind of ensures that they will. Um, especially on Mac platforms, there's a lot of um, user pressure to adopt new features of the platform. So you don't want to be that one app that blinds your users when they're using everything else in a dark style and then they open your app and are just like totally thrown out of the, uh, the illusion of a dark room. So on Windows, um, it's actually kind of better and kind of worse. Um, in Windows 8 and 10, they have this newer toolkit they're using called Modern UI. Uh, and they, in the settings, they have just a light or dark uh, appearance preference here as well. Um, because this was supported from day one on the t in the toolkit, um, because they actually they defaulted to a dark style on the phone for phone UIs and light style on the desktop, um, because this was supported in the toolkit on day one, they can kind of just toggle that feature of the toolkit and expect everything to work. Um, and so this is what it looks like if you toggle on the dark style. Uh, but they also have multiple other toolkits on their platform, and generally apps in the, written in other toolkits don't follow this spec, but they can. Um, the File Explorer is an example of this. They made a big deal about how their file app now supports the system-wide dark style. Even though it's written in a completely different toolkit, um, it can hook off of this preference and do something about that information. Uh, web browsers are another example. Um, like Firefox and Chrome aren't built using like native uh, Windows modern toolkit but they can hook off of that dark style to say, uh, we want to render the, the UI and, and uh, web pages if they support it in a dark style. So Android, uh, Android 10 is officially introducing an OS-wide dark style, much like the others. It behaves pretty similarly. Um, but Google has been actually playing with this idea for a while and kind of, they're more willing to kind of experiment in the public space with their product, which can be good and bad for their users. Um, and actually on Android specifically in mobile OSs, uh, this is where it's become really popular for apps to have a, a light or dark toggle in the app itself. So it's like Twitter and Telegram and your Reddit apps. Um, so this is kind of, these, this is, you know, before this might even be supported in the OS itself, all of these apps have a light or dark toggle inside where you can say, I'm using it in a dark environment, I want it to be dark all the time. Um, but the problem with that is you run into the same problems of you might be scrolling your Twitter and it's all nice and dark and you're in a dark room and then you pop over to Telegram and it's blinding because you forgot to set that at the same time. So it's hard to keep the state of things in sync. And I think Google saw this. Uh, and so in Android 8, Google started playing with a system level dark style sort of. Uh, it was just based on the brightness of your wallpaper. And so if you have a light wallpaper, the default kind of shell UI would be light. If you set a dark wallpaper, a darker wallpaper, most of the default shell UI would be dark. Apps didn't really follow this preference, but they could, but it was kind of a mess because there were no guidelines. So this is an example of kind of what not to do uh, publicly because it can be a really confusing experience for users. But in Android 10, Google's trying to fix this and they just added an explicit system-wide dark style preference. Um, it's in the top, like, settings toggles like just like turning on night light or turning on or off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth you can just toggle a, a system-wide dark style and then your system apps your third-party apps everything can can hook on that and, and flip over between the two states um, and third party third-party apps are expected to respect it um, it's basically if you build against the newest libraries much like Mac OS if you build against the newest libraries it's a default feature of the toolkit but you can also hook off of that and do more interesting things with custom styles. An example of that is actually the Notes app on the right. They uh, change the color of the foreground of the notes, or the background of the notes, uh, based on the light or dark style. So it's not just changing the background color and foreground color of the app itself, but they're using like slightly darker versions of their color palette um, 
because they think, okay, you might be in a dark environment. We want to actually reduce the total amount of brightness. Um, so it's not just like inverting, inverting everything. And then in iOS uh, 13, so or in iOS itself, uh, just like on other platforms and OSs, you've been able to do a kind of a the hammer of uh, inverting the display in accessibility settings for a long time. Then they also introduced this sort of smart invert, I think is what they called it, uh, where the OS would try to invert the color of the background and foreground of like text, but not of images and icons. And it sort of mostly worked most of the time, but it still would get into weird issues with unreadable text sometimes. Um, and that really seemed like a stopgap between you know a, the hard invert and a better dark you know, style preference. So uh, in iOS 13, they're actually implementing a full-on dark style, uh, much like the other platforms. And so apps, again, are expected to build on the latest libraries for the OS, and then they get this for free. Uh, if they use default text or default widget styles, it just works for them. Um, but again, they can opt in or opt out of it. And interestingly, something that Apple's doing here but not on Mac OS is they have a schedule feature. Um, this is the only platform I found that actually had that implemented. Um, and I think that's an interesting thing that could be talked about more is you can separately from like a nightlight mode, you can actually schedule the dark mode. If you say every night at uh, midnight, I want to change to a dark mode because I'm going to be in bed. And if I turn my phone on, I don't want it to blind me. Um, so I think that's an interesting thing we can think about more too. They also do some other kind of weird, interesting things like uh, the default wallpapers on iOS now actually have a light and a dark variant of those wallpapers. And depending on the system wide, preference, those wallpapers have different styles and, and behave a little bit differently, which is kind of a way to, to implement it not just in like the native toolkit app UI, but throughout the system itself. And then on the web. So, you know, what good is a dark style if you open a web browser and you get blinded all the time? Um, they know, these platforms know that, and that's why they're working within the W3C to uh, actively fix this, hopefully, for the web. Uh, and so Safari actually today on uh, the latest version of macOS supports this out of the box. Um, it's a uh, CSS media query you can hook off of and you can just set different variables for a uh, dark preference. And it's supported and works pretty well. Uh, if you are using uh, Safari and go to webkit.org, it's there. Other websites that have started to adopt it like blogs and things just work. And this is, it hooks off of the system wide uh, dark pre style preference. Um, similarly, this is uh, Firefox actually supports this uh, on Mac OS and Windows and sort of on Linux if you do some kind of weird hacks. Uh, but if you do, it's a CSS media query, the elementary blog, it took like two seconds to do a, a decent dark style there as well. So this is something that's like, it's coming, it's supported across platforms. Um, it's mostly kind of a a waiting game on, on ensuring like app de or uh, website developers know about this and as they start to use platforms where it's supported, they'll start to say, oh, I, I don't want to be the one web developer who blinds everybody on everybody's computer. So they, it's likely that they will adopt uh, the dark style preference here. So across all these implementations, there's kind of a lot of common elements and common threads that we could turn into requirements if we wanted to do something similar in free desktop. Um, this is also important, not just to, you know, to do, what, do what the other guys are doing, but because this is what users of these platforms are, are coming from, uh, and this is what users of our platforms are going to expect, but it's also what developers are going to expect. Uh, if, they, if a developer has experience writing for Mac OS or iOS or Windows or Android, they have certain understandings of how a dark style works, and so it could be beneficial to do it in a similar way so it's less of a barrier to new developers. Um, so what's needed for the free desktop for a dark style? Um, so desktop-wide, I, I think this is important. You know, like the old Wild West of Android, it just was a mess. I think it is valuable to have it be a, a desktop-wide preference um, because it just, it just makes sense to keep things in sync. Um, and while I think per app toggle, toggles can work to override the desktop wide preference, um, there's some arguments on why they might want to do that. Uh, but I think it should apps should default to a desktop wide setting and, and keep in sync. Uh, 
Uh, I think it also has to be developer opt-in. I, I don't think apps can be expected to work if you just rip out their style sheet and change it out from under them without giving them a heads up about it. Um, apps, whether that's just in the form of like an API break and saying AP, apps built against this API have to support it, uh, or whether it's uh, more opt-in by saying this is a new feature of the toolkit, you can decide to choose uh, to support it or not. And user pressure, again, should provide the incentive for app developers to do it because they don't want to be that one app that blinds their users. Uh, it also should be cross-desktop and cross-toolkit. Um, it's not any good if it's only implemented in one toolkit because as much as I would hope that everybody's using all native GTK everything everywhere all the time, that's not the real world we live in. There's Electron apps, there's Qt apps on GTK desktops, there's GTK apps on Qt desktops. Uh, it really should be implemented across toolkits so that we can deliver a compelling, uh, consist more consistent experience uh, regardless of the toolkit being used. And it really should be a dark preference. Um, this kind of goes along with the developer opt-in, but I think it's important to think about it not as a dark mode that might imply that you're forcing everything to go dark. It's a dark preference. The user is expressing a preference that I would like the desktop to be darker. I would like my apps to be darker. And what the, exactly that means within apps is can, can kind of be up to the apps themselves um, to, to hook off of. And it's also not, I think it's important that we don't kind of get into the weeds and say, well, do we want a preference to be everything is always light all the time? Because uh, especially in GNOME, we have apps that are like media-centric apps that are, are dark by default even on a light desktop. Um, I think it gets a little hairy when you start having like a tri-state setting where it's like, I want everything to be light all the time. I want everything to be dark all the time. I want apps to be light or dark depending on what they want to do by default. I think it's important that the desktop as it is by default is how it is today, where apps uh, like media apps can be dark, but then there's also a preference to override it and make everything dark, kind of bring the lights down. So uh, tomorrow there's a boff. It's at the same time as the GTK boff, which is not great scheduling, but we'll make it work. Um, so come to the boff and we can chat a lot more about this. Uh, and I kind of zoomed through a lot of things, but I have more examples of different platforms that we can look at um, and kind of answer questions on what, what problems of implementation might be or um, yeah, how we would want to approach it. Any questions that we can answer now? Remember there is a boff though, so I don't want to get like super into the weeds. If anyone has any questions, please use the microphone uh, on your desk by once hitting the button on the left. Or the right, depending on which side you're on, I think, maybe. Right? I don't know. Any questions? Any thoughts? Any complaints? Any gripes? So how exactly did you come to the number on the... Uh, on the first slide, like the number 88% use dark style mode. So the, um, if you go to blog.elementary.io, there's like the, the results of like in a lot of detail, but basically the question was phrased as, um, when given the option, do you use, and this is after asking them like what platforms they use and stuff, but the question is, when given the option, do you use a dark style? And then the answers were like, never, uh, sometimes, always, or I don't know. And the 88% was the people who had said sometimes or always. Um, so it's not like 88% of people are always in a dark mode all the time. But it's effectively a large majority of people at least sometimes like to turn that feature on. Um, and then that's why the follow-up questions are more about the why. Like, uh, do you, um, are you doing this because you just prefer how it looks? Are you doing it because of accessibility reasons? Are you doing it because of eye strain reasons? Um, and then those are aggregated into that 81% are things that are outside of the device itself, like uh, headaches and eye strain. And how did you get access to those users? Like, wh yeah, yeah. where did you meet those users? Um, across social media and, um, yeah, so it's it's like, this is not representative of every single user out there in the whole world, obviously. It's biased towards uh, people who follow, like, elementary and GNOME, posted it to, like, the elementary GNOME KDE uh, subreddits, uh, Twitter accounts and um, just kind of shared it around that way. Okay, did you ask your parents, for example, what they use or prefer? I did, yeah, yeah. And it was similar <laughs> where, uh, usually like in conversations, it's, it's been similar where uh, 
most people seem to uh, sometimes use a dark style, like especially people who aren't like, I don't know, the super stereotypical nerdy Linux people. Um, they're like, yeah, I, I, I sometimes like, my dad drives at night, for example, like in a semi, and he, he uses it at night when he's in the car because that way it's not as like uh, high contrast with his surrounding environment. Uh, okay. Uh, one, wait, I had one more question. Uh, okay. One thing I'd be interested in is like, uh, have you looked at sort of how it went when they introduced it on the Mac and like what potential pitfalls are there? Because I've heard a lot of bad stuff about the way it was yes. done there where people like switch to it, maybe, like try it when they install and then like uh, after half an hour they like switch away and then are the light forever. So Interesting. I, yeah, I haven't heard that sentiment exactly. Uh, the main problem I've seen there has been like non-native toolkits like Electron apps, just like Electron didn't have a way to hook off of that setting for quite a while. So things like Slack are just like always light no matter what. Um, and that's being mitigated as users are kind of demanding it, it seems like. Um, anecdotally, I've seen a lot of users switch to a dark style in like um, audio production environments and photo editing environments. And it seems like it's, it's when the apps that they're using day to day are already dark, uh, they really often want to turn the rest of the system to match that. Um, I'm less sure about, I guess, more casual users who are just using you know, Twitter and Facebook and whatever. Um, but I think that would be interesting to look at more. Thank you. Thank you. And come to the BOF tomorrow. <laughs>